I got involved with Chateau Libertas before I actually started at the winery. When we were students, we used to drink a lot at the old Grand Hotel on the corner of uh, Dorp and I think it's Bird. And working in the lab there, Mr. Winshaw and Ronnie Malk would come and taste all the samples on the, on the table there in the lab. And that's sort of when I got talking and listening to them that I was heard more and more, this is the wine suitable for Chateau Libertas. Chateau Libertas is the only wine in South Africa that can be called Chateau. And that comes from the agreement we had with the French. They would buy our crayfish if we didn't use their place names, like Chateau and Bordeaux and Champagne and Burgundy, etc., which we adhere to. But because it was on the market from 1939, before the Crayfish Agreement, we were allowed to use the name Chateau Libertas. It's unique. The best wine that I've tasted in my life, South African wine, was Chateau Libertas. We're here in Stellenbosch at the Vinotec, rainy morning in May, and we are busy with a fantastic project on Chateau Libertas. We are launching a memorial magnum um, as a tribute to late Dame P. Bailey, who passed away last year. We tasted some components of the blend um, together with th uh, three industry leaders, uh, wine critics, um, Michael Freejohn, Christian Eads, and also Benny Howard. Um, very interesting tasting. So I'm Andrea Freebra. I'm the head of winemaking and viticulture at Distel. So with Dampy's passing, because he was such a huge influence in the wine industry as a whole and obviously his close connections to, to De Stel, um, there was a, an idea to honour him and keep his memory alive and no better way to do that than with linking it to Chateau Libertas's 90th birthday. And we've tried to combine certain elements into this project as well that were very close to Dame P's heart, such as Stellenbosch being a wine of origin. That was being his, it was his home for many, many years. Um, and also he was very closely linked with the whole demarcation and the wine of origin scheme. So we thought that that would be one lovely aspect to bring into this project. Um, and then obviously because of, it was one of the wines that he enjoyed over the years, we thought there was a perfect fit there. And we've actually just finalized now the, the components, the, the cultivars going into the blend and again there's a lovely link to um, Dame P's history and heritage and what we've decided to put into the bottle. I really think this is an important initiative uh, in part because it celebrates the life and the role that Dame P. Bailey played in terms of the modern Cape wine industry. He was a man who came in at the sort of transition era of the 60s when the industry was still very much, in a sense, a winemaker driven space. But he worked for a company that had to sell wine and he managed to bridge that gap brilliantly. He then also played a role in the broader industry sense as part of the demarcation commission. He was the guy who, in a sense, directed what happened to draw the lines between the various appellations. And at the time that that was launched, there was a sense that was there enough of a distinctiveness separating Paul from Stellenbosch and the wards within, for example, the Stellenbosch region. This we now will take for granted, but it wasn't that certain 50 years ago. Uh, we're launching it on Dame Peace's birthday, which is the 12th of October. This magnum will carry the original label of Chateau de Vitas. Um, of course, we will beautify it with new papers and printing specs. 
but everything will be as it was um, since 1932. So we finally decided on a 60% Cabernet and a 40% Cinso blend. The Cabernet is there to add the structure and the Cinso is there for the beautiful strawberry fruit. We tried various percentages but this is the one that really just stood out um, and I think it would be one that Dainty would be proud of and would be, would be proud to drink. A man who loved wine to be a beverage to be enjoyed. He wasn't one of those people who took wine, set it on a pedestal, looked at it and didn't pull the cork. And if we're going to produce a wine that in that sense represents his achievement in the industry, we have to look at a wine that is going to be drinkable. But the extraordinary thing about the older wines that Dampy was involved in producing is how well they've kept. So these are wines that are not just drinking wines. These are wines which are keepers. These are wines that are made with a view to keeping, but also with a view to enjoying, not keeping it in the cupboard for your heirs to worry what to do with. And I think that that's what we set out to achieve today. And I think looking at the final result, what we've managed to get together. There is no single architect of the Cape wine industry. What we are discovering is how many important role players there were and how little written record there is of what they were doing. So the fact that the profits from this initiative will go towards funding what has to be an industry-wide initiative, which means that not everybody can sit back and say, well, that's fine, Distel will pick up the bill. Other people have to put money into the kitty in order to co-own what we are seeing here. There's an opportunity to capture the oral tradition before it's too late. There's an opportunity to record those memories and the fact that they span another generation. And by doing so, we will have a much clearer idea of how wines were made, what made them good, what made them keepable going back not just 20, 30 or 40 years, but actually 100 years. When you look at the living memory of people now in their 70s and 80s who contributed to that process. The older you get, the more you tend to go back into history. Um, and history is, is quite important. Um, your legacy, uh, what you stood for um, to move into the future. It is, it's really about preserving um, the wine legacy. It's preserving what, what Dimpy has done for the wine industry. And this is also to preserve the history of wine. And that is why we are launching this amazing product. I think without doubt, I think Dimpy would recognize that in at least the intention, and we're obviously hoping in the execution, that the Wine represents exactly his philosophy about wine, which is that from the moment you pull the cork, you get something that you can really enjoy, not merely worth drinking, and that if you kept that bottle for 10 or 20 years or discovered it in your cellar 30 or 40 years later, you would pull the cork and get pleasure, not disappointment.